Lift your hands to heaven and get another drink, man. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Fill us, kill us, and bring us back to life again with you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, glory. Can't you just stay in God's presence forever? Yes. You will. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? Nothing will matter then. See, that's how he wants to get us to. That place of complete surrender that nothing matters. Anybody ever gone through a circumstance or trial? <laughs> well, he did something. Welcome to the earth. <laughs> you know, the Bible tells us to count it all joy when we go through trials and tribulations, not if. Amen? It's a when. Everyone say it's a when. Amen. It's not an if. And when we go through these trials and tribulations, there's always a pathway to freedom. Always. Now, the foundation of it Jesus gave us was to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow him. That is the foundation of the pathway to freedom. But on that foundation, there are other things that connect to it because there's a part that says cooperate. No cooperation, no participation, no freedom. Amen? So if you don't know how to cooperate, can you be free? No. You go back into bondage. And many believers go back into bondage. They go back into bondage by bitterness. They go back into bondage by unforgiveness. They go back into bondage by offense. They go back into bondage by all kinds of foolish things. Because they didn't get it according to the way they believe they should have it. Amen? Yes. And in this, the enemy is not an idiot. The Bible says he is the most cunning beast God created. And in Luke chapter 4, would you go there with me? So when we get into a trial or step in a, a puddle of affliction, hello? <laughs> there is a pathway to the freedom because what happens is when we get into those things, one of the things the enemy is trying to do is imprison us. He tries to imprison us there. In Luke chapter 4, in verse 4, we see Jesus' responses when the enemy was trying to imprison him. Is everybody with me? And it says, but Jesus answered him saying, it is what? Written. Written. There's something that Jesus did, he said. It said that he answered him with his mouth. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth. So where are you going to get the words that proceed out of the mouth of God? In the dictionary? Hello? The Bible. Come on, man. It's real simple, isn't it? This is where it's recorded. Amen? Amen? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And you're going to get those words of God in the Bible. And you're also going to get, to get those words of God by his spirit who speaks to you. Amen. Okay, go to verse 8. Here's another one. And Jesus answered and said again to the devil, get behind me what? Satan. For it is what? written did you notice that he says it is written why because he spoke it and had them write it in the old testament and now it's being spoken in the new testament or the new covenant he said for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and only him shall you serve 
in verse 12. And Jesus did what? Answered and said to him again. What did he say? It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now look at verse 13. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, hello, just because you overcame one doesn't mean there's not another. When the devil has, had ended every temptation, he departed from him until when? Until an opportune time. Listen, he knows when you go into something and you're weak. He doesn't strike you when you're strong. He strikes you when you're weak. And if you put your focus on your weaknesses, he'll strike you in your strengths. Hello? He's just looking for an opportunity to strike you. That's his purpose. And how does he strike you? He speaks to you. He tries to get you caught up in a temptation, an offense. Does everybody understand this? He's looking for an opportunity. It says the devil departed from him and then came back and waited for an opportunity. He waits for the opportunity. He waits for that circumstance in your life. He waits for someone to say something. He waits for, any, he waits for you to lose your job. He waits for you to get cheated on your paycheck. He waits for your, you to get a flat tire. He waits for something that's not going your way to happen. He's waiting. Does everybody understand that? He's waiting. What's he waiting for? To tempt you. Well, what's he going to tempt you? He's going to tempt you with something he says. John 14. We at this house know much about these things. Paul wrote multiple letters to the church to remind them because they had allowed the enemy to snare them. In John 14, glory, Jesus was speaking to his, this, uh, he was actually speaking to the Sadducees and Pharisees and the Sanhedrin. And he said to them in verse 29, And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. Oh, no, he's talking to his disciples here. I will no longer talk much with you for the what? Ruler of this world is what? Coming. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan. So he's talking to his disciples and he's saying, listen, I'm not going to be able to talk to you much longer because the ruler's coming. In other words, he's being allowed to come to fulfill the will of God. And he has nothing what? In me. But that the world may know that I love the Father and as the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise and let's go from here. So he was allowing his disciples to know that the devil didn't have nothing in him. And there's a reason why he didn't have anything in him. Why? Because he just proved it by saying, it's written. He proved it by always rejecting him. Everybody got it. See, many people try to reject the devil in their emotions. You reject him in your words. Amen. And John 12. And he's speaking to his disciples again in verse 30. Somewhere around there. And Jesus answered and said, The voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Read 31 with me. Now is the judgment of this world, and now the ruler of this world will be what? Cast out. And if and I, if am, I am lifted from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. 
This he said, signifying by what death he would die. So Jesus is also expressing again that the ruler of this earth would be cast out. Now, in other words, he would be disarmed. But he'd only be disarmed to those who are under covenant with Jesus Christ. Does everybody got it? But it didn't mean that the devil wasn't going to try to tempt anyone else. Amen. He's still trying to, listen, you're a threat to him. I'm a threat to him. He's not going to just sit back. This is reality. And so many times we get so caught up and begin to lose sight of what's happening around us. And why we're doing the things that we're doing. Why we're thinking the way we're thinking. Why we're feeling the way we're feeling. All of these things are associated with a voice. And not discerning that voice will bring a person into bondage. Into in prison. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We have a wonderful teaching called, Who Told You That? If we would start asking ourselves, who told me that? <laughs> we, we would begin to recognize things. That's why it's so important to abide and so, because things are reminded. That's why it's so important every day to pray, because the Holy Spirit reminds us. Think, you know, look, at the more you're filled with the Spirit, the more things are quickened to you, the more you're sensitive. The less you're filled with the presence of God and the Spirit, you're more dull. It takes you too long to respond. And so what you do is you react first instead of respond. Then you realize later, oh, man, what I do? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, In verse 9, would you read it with me? The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. With what? With what? With all what? Power. Does he have power? You bet you got he's got power. I'm telling you, he's got power. You ever go into some place and demonize witchcraft and stuff? They're levitating stuff off the floor. Or they're doing all kinds of weird stuff. But he doesn't have no power against the kingdom of God, against the anointing. The Bible says that the anointing that we carry, the gates of hell, cannot prevail. Now, we must be submitters in this arena for the anointing to be released to us in every area. It says, the coming of the lawless ones according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and what? Lying wonders. Lying wonders. The lawless one, he will have power, he will have signs, and he's going to lie. He's going to what? Lie. John chapter 8. Anybody ever been lied to? <laughs> You're lied to every single day by that voice. Every day you're lied to. Sometimes every hour. <laughs> Sometimes even sooner than that. If he, the devil sees that you're walking in a weak place, if he sees that you skipped something, he's going to try. He sees you didn't make connection that day. He's after you. He knows. He sees that you're not in fellowship and corporate worship for a period of time. He's after you. I'm telling you. It's got your number. You light up, beep, 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 like on a radar screen. Beep, 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 beep. There they are. Food. There's lunch. <laughs> In John chapter 8, is that where I said to go? In verse 43.
Jesus said, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father who? The devil. This is where he's talking to the, the religious group. And the desires of your father you want to what? Do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in what? Truth. Because there's no truth in him. Hello. So there's no truth in the devil. There's no truth in his voice. Everything he speaks is a lie. And what he does is he'll take truth. He'll take a piece of truth. But within that truth, somewhere along the line, there's a lie. It's like eating a hot dog and only the bun. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you're all thinking about hot dogs, right? <laughs> hot dog. It says, when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Now, he's telling this to the religious group. He's telling them, look it. I'm standing right in front of you. You don't even know who I am. You've been quoting me and speaking about me all of these years in the Old Testament, and you missed. I'm standing right here. But because of the voice of the devil that spoke lie to them, there's something that happened. They believed it. And they rejected Jesus because they believed the lie. And you know one of their biggest problems were? Fear. See, when you believe the lie, fear is always the result. Does so everybody got it? When you believe the lie, fear is always the result. Fear of not having. I mean, any kind of fear is the result. Torment. All of those things are power. I can't do this. We begin to focus more on ourself instead of the Lord. Is everybody okay? John 10. In verse 10. Is everybody there? John 10, 10. The thief, who's the thief? Satan. It says what? The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, Here's something vitally important. One of the things he wants to steal is your identity. The first thing he's trying to steal is your identity. Your identity what? You, your identity in Christ. Who you are in him. Why? Because the Bible says that you and I have been given authority, dominion, covenant, power, that we're more than conquerors, that he was in us is greater and he was in the world, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that if the Lord be with me, who can be against me? See, these are the areas where people lose sight of who they are. And then they, when they lose sight of who they are, they react instead of respond. Jesus responded to everything the devil gave him. When you lose your identity because you're being attacked, the reason why you lost your identity is because what he spoke, you believed. What he spoke, you believed. The end result will be fear or torment. So what happens is when he speaks and we believe, we, there's something that begins to happen. We begin to perceive. In other words, we begin to see. See, perception is an area of what you perceive. In other words, what you see. 
what is what another one like if i'm seeing something if i don't know the difference between a ford and a chevy if i don't know the differences and that voice tells me that's a chevy and that's a chevy but one's a ford and one's a chevy i'm going to perceive that they're both the same does everybody understand that perception even the devil attacked Jesus with perception. What did he say? Look and see all I have for you. If you'll just worship me. He always tried to bring false vision to him. And that's what the enemy will do to me and you. And he does it by what he says. He'll bring false vision. Come on, every one of us has been involved in something to that degree where somebody had talked about someone. Man, you know, what's his name or what's her name? And then, 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 then. You go, oh, really? Well, maybe I better be careful. And then you meet that person that's totally different. Man, I don't see any of those things that you see. Why? Because there's bitterness between that person and that one. That person's holding bitterness to that one. So their perception is totally different. Do you understand it? And bitterness is a lie, isn't it? So come on, does everybody get this? Bitterness is a lie. Is fear a lie? Yeah. So actually, bitterness, when there's bitterness and unforgiveness, you know, it's involved fear. So that perception of that person, the enemy's feeding. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, look at what they're doing here. Now what they're doing. Now there's criticism. False judgment. False accusations. Oh, man, that devil is just painting a picture of that person, and you're lose, you've lost your identity. You've lost your identity, and now you've been taken captive. Hallelujah. So the devil comes to steal your identity, and what he wants to do, he wants to kill your freedom. By killing your freedom, what he's going to do is he, he's going to imprison your soul. By doing that, it's your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination. He imprisons it. Why? Because he first must remove your identity. Then he can set a whole course of what you perceive. And if he's got, that, got you in that place, the next thing he's going to do is destroy your mission. He will come to steal your identity, kill your freedom, because he's now put you in captivity in your soul, and then he will destroy your mission. You will not be able to fulfill what God has asked you to do. You're so busy trying to rescue yourself. Hello? 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Is everybody okay? That religious spirit, boy, let me tell you something about a religious spirit. It's two spirits associated. The first one is pride, and the second one is fear in a religious spirit. They're always afraid they might be found out. They don't even, they don't even realize it. Oh, they can quote the scripture, and they can tell you you got a bunch of demons when they're walking in with three times as many. They can tell you how you should look and how you should dress and how you can act, but they can't maintain it themselves. They can, they can tell you exactly how to be a Christian, but they can't walk it themselves. They're up and down and unstable. But they have a perception because their leading voice is the voice of a stranger. And it's always causing division, strife. And it's always bringing doubt into areas of whether this is God's will. It brings anxiousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, is everybody okay? It come, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Your identity he'll steal. Then he kills your freedom by putting you in captivity of the soul. And then he will destroy 
your mission because you will not be able to fulfill it. You'll be wandering. And you'll be wondering, what the heck am I doing? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now, the Lord is the what? Spirit. Come on. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Well, hello. So doesn't the enemy always want to replace the Holy Spirit with his spirit? Always. And he's not going to do that by saying, oh, can we make an exchange? He's not going to warn you ahead of time. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you all things to come. He's going to do it by a way that you may not recognize it if you are not diligent and alert. Consistent and alert. Every time you fall into a place that's not going your way, you can be sure that the enemy's there to step in. Every time. Look at, he's waiting for opportunity. Okay, so you ran over the dog. He's there. Does everybody got this? You said something you should have and you repented, but he comes, doesn't he? Somebody said something to you and you went, ooh, offense. Oh, there's more than one there. See, they know you can get two meals out of that one. And they're both speaking. And what they're doing, they're bringing, they're bringing you to you of woe is me to remove you from your identity with him. When you accept what he says, it promotes perception. You see it. There's something that happens after you see it. You feel it. Now he's using that emotion or that feeling to cause you to see it again or vice versa. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the thing is, we want to keep maintaining where the, the spirit with us. So we don't want to grieve him. Amen. And let me tell you, he's hard to grieve. You're not going to step on his foot and he's going to leave, okay? It depends your relationship with the Lord. Let me tell you, I step on the foot of the Holy Spirit. You know what he's going to do with me? Get off. Let's go. You know, I couldn't play tennis. I couldn't even set up the ping pong table. Because I might re-injure myself, so. Decided to go out and buy a foosball table. <laughs> so on my search of a foosball table, I was driving, and the Lord said, you know, you, you didn't talk to me about this table. Whoa, whoa. I said, I'm sorry. Forgive me for not including you in this. Can I please get a foosball table? <laughs> and he said, of course. He said, but I want you to acknowledge me in this. Now, I didn't know what he had in plan. So I... This one guy has got this foosball table. Man, it's, you know, and I go and meet him at a warehouse, and there's two guys there. So I get the witness to those, those two guys, and they load up my truck. Well, he first says they want 100 bucks for it, and I said, I'll give you 50. He says, well, I can't get a hold of my boss. 50. They load my truck up. I give him the 50. I bring it home. Now, there was another guy really I wanted to see too, but 
He had one for 100 that was brand new, just about brand new. So I bring it home, unload it from the truck, put it up in the back. We're looking at it, and we're beginning to see it's outside now. And, and some of the Formica's beginning to wave at you. I'm like, well, I, you know, I asked the Lord. And next thing I get a call, the dude calls, and he says, listen, can you bring that back? I said, what's the matter? I said, are you nuts? <laughs> and he goes, no, my boss is having a fit. I guess it's something personal to him. I said, well, I said, man, we just unloaded. He said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll figure it out. I'll, 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 I'll give him the 50 bucks or whatever. And he hung up. And I called him back. I said, man, you ain't got to do that. I said, come, if, if you want the table, come on and get it. I said, because we've already, lo- already took it off. He says, okay, I'll be right there. So Gary was helping me, and I said, all right, I guess we're supposed to go look at the other table. So the dude comes, gives us the money, and we're just, okay. And we went out in another area of town, and and and. We meet this person there who I thought it was the person. He opens the garage door, Gary, and both of our eyes were, whoa, this is the table, man. All right. Thank you, Lord, for shutting one door and opening the other. And he's saying, that's why I wanted, my, I wanted you to acknowledge me in this. We're going we're to turn this into a, pro, a mission and an outreach. I'm thinking, okay. So the dude comes and, and he, said, he looks at my truck. He says, what's this eternal library? <laughs> you asking the wrong guy then, brother. Or the right guy. <laughs> so we started talking to him. And we're sharing with the next thing. I know I'm telling him my testimony and how Jesus rescued me and visitation from the Lord. There's no coincidence. How what we had to go through in these foosball tables just to get to you. Brother, it ain't about the foosball table. It's about you. And he got a load full. Come to find out he was a Muslim that was just coming out of being a Muslim. Also found out he wasn't a guy I was talking to on the phone. It was his brother. The other guy couldn't leave work, so his brother came. So we added him to the hit list, and we took the foosball table and came home, and we just rejoiced. And this guy said, yes, I'm going to go to that website. I'm going to search this out. And I kept telling him that Jesus is God, and, and we left it that. But in that, it's that area where the enemy would like to infiltrate and tell us something different. He'd like to get us off course in everything. There was no fear. There was no, okay, praise God. All right, well, you know, I could have been a jerk about it and said, dude, you ain't coming to get this foosball table. You can have it back for 100 bucks. <laughs> You're going to sell $50 to the kingdom whether you like it or not. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be right before the Lord. Because I was realizing that God was shutting the door and opening up another one. But I could have got all caught up and confused, especially all the other things that were attacking me everywhere else. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll just continue on. <laughs> James chapter 4. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. James chapter 4. So here's the, the pathway to freedom. This, this is where Jesus is explaining some things to us, which is vitally important. And, and we know this. It's not we, that we don't know it, but we really need to be reminded of what's going on. In James 4, 7. Everybody knows this scripture, I hope. Speak it with me, please. Therefore, now, you know, when you see therefore, that means if, if you'll do this. If you'll do it, therefore is always associated with if you'll do this. Therefore, submit to God. Now, by submitting to God, you're accepting what he says about you. Has everybody got it? What you are is you are accepting your identity in Christ. Submit to God. 
resist the devil and he will flee. In other words, as a believer, because we are submitting to God, all right, in other words, you submit to God, resist the devil. As a believer, because we do, you know who you are, you have an identity, right? You're maintaining your identity. Now it comes to the area where, because you're going to submit to God, resist the devil. That's your identity. I'm going to submit to God. That's how I'm getting my identity, right? Amen? In other words, if I'm not submitting to God and accepting my identity, then I'm submitting to the enemy, and I'm accepting what he says, which is a lie. And that will bring me into bondage because he's trying to first steal my identity. Amen? So when we get to that point of submitting to God, resisting the devil, now what's happening is we are now rejecting the devil and accepting what God says. Is everybody with me? Everyone say, I reject the lie and I accept the truth. Now, we're rejecting the lie because what he's trying to do is get us, he's trying to steal our identity. And we are accepting the truth of who we are. That's why we submitted to God to get identity so we could resist the devil. But now we stand firm in the area of reject, accept. Reject, accept. Because if I do not reject it, what's going to happen is I'm going to accept a lie. That lie is going to give me a perception of me seeing differently than what God wants me to see. It's going to put me in a place of assumption. Amen. And it's going to bring captivity and fear. The end result or torment. Is everybody okay? Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, in verse 7. Let's go to verse 6 first. It says, Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. In other words, what he speaks, don't eat. For as he thinks in his heart, so he what? Is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Now, again, as we think, so we are. In other words, because what we think is what we see ourselves. And that's how the enemy attacks me and you. So he can tell you that there's a butterfly in your head all day long. And you be. I believe it. Why? Because if I believe it, I see it. If I see it, I feel it. Hello. If I feel it, I'm going to chase it. I'm going to look. It's going to take me away from who? Who I am. Who I am. You know, listen. When we were in the world, you'd walk by somewhere and they'd look at you. You'd look at them, especially opposite sex. Next thing you're thinking, oh, there's my wife. There's my husband. And that's all they did is put eye contact. Maybe that's the one. Then when he starts playing with you. Hello? Believe me, I've counseled with individuals that were saying, would you please pray for my husband and I to be returned? I say, first, I need to find out what's happening. Come to find out the husband's been married for three years to somebody else. No, I'm not going to pray that. Do you see that perception? The enemy's telling this person, God's going to have that person divorce that person and get back, re back to that person. 
And this person's waiting. Hello? Now they have kids. God's not going to interrupt that now, is he? No. The enemy speaks the lie. The person accepts it because they didn't reject it. It brings a perception. That perception brings a feeling. Amen? That feeling brings fear, and there's bondage. Anybody ever hurt you? Anybody ever hurt you with words? Whose fault is it? That's right. We allowed it. Somebody get it. We allow it. I just don't like how you spoke to me. Well, too bad. Why did you listen? <laughs> Hello? Somebody got this. I'm telling you, and listen, when you are offended, it doesn't mean you won't be offended. Don't go there. Step out of it. Because the enemy is going to start speaking to you in every way. Reject him. Reject him. And ex they accept your identity. Because that's all he's trying to do is steal from you who you are. Then you know what you'll do? You'll react. You won't think nothing about no one or running. You're just going to go in and express yourself. And I said, yourself. Amen? And you're reacting. If you've got to express yourself, you're reacting. Or you can get, become really religious. Well, the word says this. Yeah, but look at the attitude behind it. Well, the word says that. Nice. I see people trying to kill each other with the word. Come on, the name of Jesus. No, you come on, the name of Jesus. Well, the word says this, word says this. Nothing's happening. Because they're both in the flesh. No back by the anointing. So why even go there? You're not going to fight another brother and another sister with the word of God. Hello. That's just the enemy. Let me tell you, they have a whole family that shows up to get fed on that. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, those are opportunities the devil takes advantage of in these attacks. Amen? Is everybody okay? Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Wow. Reject, accept. Reject, accept. Real simple. Reject, accept. Amen? Revelation 2.10. Look at this. Read it with me. Jesus says, Do not, what? Fear any of those things which you are about to suffer indeed the devil's about to throw some of you into prison hello he's going to say you're going to go into captivity that you may be what tested and you will have tribulation 10 days be faithful until death and i will give you the crown of life now look at this he's saying don't fear when you fall into the tribulations. Don't fear when you fall into trials. Even though you may go into prison or jail, you'll be rescued. Amen? Just don't let the devil steal your identity. Do not let the devil steal your what? Identity. And of course, we know that that means captivity. Some of us will go into captivity. Spiritual captivity says, don't lose your identity. Don't lose it. So many times we give our identity away. We allow the devil to steal it. And we go into captivity. Get it back. Hold on. Battle for your identity. Because you can't battle without your identity. 
Amen? Praise God. Remember, the devil comes to steal identity, kill your freedom, and destroy your mission. But submit to God to reject the devil. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 and verse 13. It says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have doing all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your what? Waste with what? Truth. Girded your waist with what? Truth. That means acceptance. Of who you are, maintaining your identity. That's truth, isn't it? Amen? There's something very important. He tells us in uh, verse 16. So you and I are to stand. That means to reject the lie with truth. Is everybody? I'm going to reject the lie with truth. Because I know who I am. In verse 16, he says this. Above all. Now, that's very interesting because he says, above what? All. Oh. Above all what? Take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. What's the fiery darts of the wicked one? His voice. It's what? His voice. He says, above all, above all, the shield of faith. Listen, what are you protecting? Your identity. Amen? Now, what's faith? Faith is spiritual sight, isn't it? So what you're going to do is you're going to quench the fiery darts because you already see who you are. And you are going to reject anything the enemy says because you will compare what he says with the truth. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 5. In verse, yeah, First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. We're going to what? Reject and accept. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It says resist. In other words, we're going to reject him. No more resistance anymore. Oh, what reason? Reject! Reject him. Steadfast into what? Faith. Because you're not going to lose your vision of who you are. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Hello. Everybody goes through it. Remember, he's always going to wait for an opportunity to attempt to attack us, isn't he? Amen? So we must be consistent. We must be alert to reject in the faith that's our identity in Christ with truth. That means what God says, who you are. You cannot lose. If you give up your identity, you will react. When you give up your identity, you react. You do not respond. Go to 1 Kings chapter 19. There was a man named Elijah who was a prophet of the Lord. He was taken up alive. He did not taste death. And he was told it was time for him to go home. He was told to go anoint 
another person named Elisha. First Kings 19. 19. Would you read it with me? So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphar, who was blowing, oh, who was blowing, who was plowing. <laughs> he was blowing the trumpet on the corner. <laughs> who was plowing. Listen, this is a new Bible, all right? It's got smaller letters. I'm having a hard time adjusting. <laughs> but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because I will reject and accept who I am. Okay. He was what? Plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. That means he was wealthy. And he was with the 12th. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. In other words, he was, when Elijah threw his mantle on him. Now listen. Everybody knew who Elijah was. He knew he was the man of God that slayed 400 prophets of Baal, called fire down from heaven on the altar. Everybody knew who Elijah was. So here comes Elijah to throw his mantle on Elisha. Eli what, what he was throwing? New identity. You're saying, look it, I know you want to be like me. Here's my identity. It's yours. Now look at, watch this, follow this. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. And he said, please let me kiss my mommy and daddy. Then I will follow you. He's like, Elijah's like, what? Do you realize how many people want that mantle? And he said to him, go back again. For what have I done to you? Go back again? What have I done to you, he says. That's all I did was throw my mantle on you so that you would receive my identity. So everybody got it. I think Elisha woke up on that right now. Okay, let's forget the kiss goodbye stuff. I'm willing to give up my identity for that new identity. I'm willing to give it up. So what does he do? So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. That what provided his old identity, he killed. And boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and the plow. So he took the plow, destroyed the plow, used that for fire. Killed all the oxen. In other words, he said, I'm willing to burn my old identity. Then I may receive a new one. So everybody got that. And gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Oh, hallelujah. See, Jesus threw his mantle on me and you. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's the mantle. But we've got to be willing to burn our old identity. We've got to be willing to reject what the enemy says and accept what God says in every circumstance, every trial, every area. We've got to be able to see things all the way through. Amen? The Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. Hello? Make no place for the devil. Listen, he didn't say you can't be angry. You're going to get angry at certain things. But it's not going to be a flesh carnal anger. You're going to be angry. I'm angry... Uh, uh, of things that are killing babies. I'm angry about that. That's a righteous anger. But it doesn't mean I'm going to go out and blow out every uh, abortion clinic. Hello. That's dumb, dumb stupid. That means that person took that anger, a righteous anger, and allowed the enemy to turn it into a carnal anger because he did not reject what the enemy was saying and he gave up his identity. 
Because he, Jesus would not go up and blow out ab abortion clinics. Hello? A person loses their identity in Christ and goes out and reacts, doesn't respond. So we're to reject and accept. Be angry, but do not sin. Amen? And make no place for the devil. The Bible says he was in Christ as a new creation. All things that pass away, all things that become new. Let me tell you, the enemy's going to always try to bring your past up. Always. And believe me, he's going to use someone else to try to bring your past up. Were you always? Oh, really? What's he trying to do? Steal your identity. See, we're supposed to be burning our old identity in our past. Amen? There's a difference between reminding someone so they don't make the same mistake, but accusing someone of the past. It's because that person's losing their identity. Or the enemy's using them to try and cause someone else to lose their identity. Is everybody okay? We're a new creation of Christ. All things pass away. All things have become new. Reject a lie. All right? You reject a lie. So what you're doing is actually rejecting your past. You're keeping it burned. Amen? And you're going to accept the truth because you're going to live in a future so that you will not react, you will respond. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Is everybody getting this? Are you okay? Are you going to use it? We'll see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. Something. I think I did something wrong here. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5. I know I got one in here. Here it is. Galatians chapter 5. Everybody there? What's it say? What? Stand what? Stand what? Fast. That doesn't move, mean stand in a place and move fast. Okay. That means... Stand fast. Reject what? The lie. Therefore, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be what? Entangled again with the yoke of what? Bondage. Reject the lie. Accept the truth. And where are you going to get the truth? In your imagination? In the dictionary the word of god first hmm. corinthians 15 oh hallelujah ah uh, thank you master first corinthians 15 Verse 58. What's therefore mean? If, if you cooperate. Speak it with me. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that you're what? Labor is not in vain. In the Lord, I'm going to close it. 2 Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verse sixteen. Therefore, 
There's that therefore again. That means if you'll cooperate. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. For Now, let me ask you this. Are you going to be renewed day by day if you're not rejecting the lie? No, you'll stay stuck. Verse 17, for our what? Light affliction, that trial and tribulation, which, which is but for a what? A, a what? A moment. Like as soon as you reject and accept, you're not losing your identity. So you're not bound up with your trial and tribulation because you're maintaining your identity, aren't you? For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not what? Look at the things which are seen. Hello? Why? Because we have rejected the lie. So we don't have a false what? Perception. And we don't have a false what? Feeling. Hmm. But we look at the... While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are what? Not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. Because we are looking at the area of who we are. Maintaining our identity. Amen? Except what he says, Right? But Jesus says, so we're going to first do what? Reject the lie and accept the truth. Reject the lie and accept the truth. And you will have victory. Why? Because you're going to maintain your identity. Amen. Is everybody okay? You will not react. You will respond. That means you ain't going to sow in the flesh and reap corruption. You're going to sow in the spirit and reap life, and to God be the glory. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed be protected by the blood of Jesus. And let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. And let your anointing rest upon your people. And may the Lord bless you and keep you, hide you in a secret place, and feed you from his throne room. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Be blessed.